gonna be doing today is we're gonna be like live drawing, like me and Clara. Because I find like our practices are very similar. Like I use a lot of colors, she uses a lot of colors. Um, so I have some like markers I got at Walmart. No, I have these. Nice. Um, that I got for free um, <laughs> off um, my housemate, so yay. <laughs> Yeah, so like uh, maybe you can like talk a little bit about your practice. My my core um, kind of inspiration for my practice would be like expanded painting, like trying to combine like painting elements with different um, kind of um, other disciplines and stuff like sculpture, like photography. Um, yeah, like what else? Oh yeah, sculpture, photography, um, like animation, video. Like I just try to combine them and like still keep an aspect of painting. But um, I do a lot of like my work kind of process based like I just um start and like I just start making and experimenting and like collaborating and combining materials and stuff and yeah and I don't really I think about what it actually means later I feel like for me I just need to make and then I think later like this year I've been thinking a lot about you know processes of making art some of the conversations I've had with you know a lot of other artists about sort of their process and how they go about making things and you know, you start hearing similar things, and one of the things I hear most often is like, an artist often doesn't know what their piece is about before they make it. You know, yeah. like, it actually like, we'll have like an urge to make something, and then we'll follow that urge, and that urge will take us to a place. And I, I just love like getting stuck in, or like, say even now, like I'm doing a drawing, but I'm just, I'm not really concentrating on it, I'm just creating, and I admit, maybe we'll come back to these drawings in a few days, and look at them differently and maybe have different opinions on them but, but for the minute I'm just drawing circles but yeah they might mean something I'm not sure yet but drawings like often like you know we don't talk about certain themes in art a lot anymore you know like I think like in 2020 certain themes like you know the idea of like like how mental health is linked to art in terms of like the creation you know mm -hmm. or you know how artists use like you know art as a form of therapy like that directly like artists don't talk about that a lot you know it's almost like for me like it almost feels like um like juvenile in a way for artists to say like oh you know like this became a way of coping etc cetera, etc cetera. but i think if you get like very like you know prominent artists that's where their like practice often begins like yayo kusama is like a really good example of that yeah no i totally get it like i like i feel like i create because i I feel the urge to create and it calms you down. It like it's where I'm truly happy. And you know, when you get into a good flow, like there's nothing better than getting into a good flow in art and being totally absorbed in that one activity. It's so nice. Like even like very fields like computer programming involve like high degrees of creativity, mm -hmm. and like a lot of professionals describe that state of flow. Like you know when it's kind of like when you're thinking but you're not thinking at the same time. Do you do this in your own practice though? Like, you mentioned going to like specific places and drawing energies off that and letting that be like a source of inspiration, right? Yeah. But like in your like painting and drawing like practice, do you do that as well? Uh, like how, like, you know, for example, like your skin pieces, right? Like maybe you can describe them a little bit, but oh, yeah. how, how, um, how do you go about making those? Oh yeah, they were like, um, uh, it's like PVA and latex and pigment like poured on acrylic and I peel them off and then I place them in different like situations and photograph them but um yeah like that process is very like this like I just be like or, like the actual physical aspect of just like mixing like large quantities of like PVA and latex together is like really soothing and then like pouring it on and just leaving it flow and then waiting for it to uh, set and then peel off like very oh it, it's very experimentational but also yeah I feel like this way of drawing is very brought back to that kind of process um but yeah ever since I graduated like my degree show work and my recent work for the last year has been very like historical and research heavy I think um and I just can't wait to get back into kind of creating for just to create because I feel like in art institutions or in art, art colleges you're kind of you're kind of forced to have a concept or you're forced to have this big idea and sometimes you just don't want to, you just want to create, like you don't want to have this massive idea. When I was at the sculpture program at OCAD, you know, um, Ontario College of Art and Design, uh, which is like where I went to school, the sculpture program often, yeah, it was like you had to have this like huge um, concept, you know, either about the world or like life or philosophy or politics. 
something yeah. like that. And, you know, that, for example, like, you know, when you're like, when you're younger, like when you're like 18, 17, like going to school, like you just think like, okay, that's what art's about. Like, that's what it's supposed to be about. And I think like the current trend in our contemporary society, you know, that's what art is. Like, if you look at like, if you read a lot of the uh, the artist statements, for example, you know, that come out of really big galleries like Gagosian and like White Cube, like they're very obscure because yeah. I think. I think about all this, you know, it's like if I have an interest in, for example, like, you know, a specific, you know, stream of philosophy, I'll like research it and I'll research all these articles and like my work is a reflection of all all this research. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it, I question is like, is that actually the role of an artist to like provide like thoroughly researched like papers and concepts and like to make work that reflects that? Or is it like purely about like not the process, but like just the, the result of the work? you know, and how impactful it could be to like, you know, uh, blind interpreters or like people who don't necessarily understand art, but are able to look at it and, you know, feel something. Maybe for art now, if like for public engagement, I think if like the public, if you can make art that's like, like true to yourself, but also like that public, that the public, it could be maybe a bit more like accessible to public. It might be, I think it's more important because I feel like, the public like are getting more into the art scene it's not as as a closed bubble as it used to be so i think um art like you know art itself occupies different roles in society and i really think about like what art's role in society is i sometimes think it's in like you know like an obscure place you know i even think like our society as a whole is in like an obscure place and art often mimic, mimic society and like you know vice versa Right. I've been thinking about this time, you know, in terms of history and like where art is. I equate it a lot to uh, like Impressionism and what was going on then, you know, because I think, you know, there was a lot of technological advancements that really like changed people and how people lived. And like in turn, it changed art. You know, people say the father of modern art is Monet because I think how we think about art started around then. But I think in 2020 we're experiencing like a digital revolution where you know new forms of behavior are like really changing us in our society like we want things to be faster we want things to be clear you know and we de demand things to like work in a more like fast way and i think art is slowly reflecting that it's becoming more like colorful and more easy to understand and slowly like being interlaced with like different areas of culture artists are becoming more fast paced like show in back in like um the renaissance and all like people would spend years on like one painting and stuff but like now it's like so fast paced i feel like art is quite like oh you just make make peace and move on jack and I, there's like not a lot of or even like someone might work in a piece for like a year but I've, i haven't heard of um, many artists working in a piece for like longer than that time there's like a different requirement now for art and like people don't know this, like one of the biggest requirements for art is that it looks good digitally. Like it's not necessarily a requirement, but I think it definitely, you know, factors into a piece of success, how well it looks on Instagram. A piece of work that looks good on Instagram isn't necessarily like a good piece of work in general. It's just, you know, it has bright colors. It translates well into a certain palette. You know, it presents well in terms of like a certain aspect ratio. Because Instagram, you know, Instagram favors art with a certain shape. Yeah, it's like whether they'll, they'll see your digital image and they'll be like, yeah, or no, kind of. And yeah, you do need to have like a good camera set up. You, you need to have a good, your lights like you, to really photograph it well. Um, yeah, it's kind of like you're being judged digitally, even though your work is physical. Yeah, and it, it's really cool, though, because like for me, I then like start thinking about what work I can create that's uniquely physical you know, or can be both, you know, or like the experience of like it being like the digital experience of something could be like uniquely different from like the physical experience of something. I don't know what that looks like. I'm just saying, I think that's a beautiful idea that I like, you know, people can do <laughs> with. Right now it's morning for me. It's 11 a.m. But it's like 6 p.m. for you, 7 p.m. Oh, it's half seven, yeah. Yeah, half seven. That's crazy that we can like be doing this like currently. You know, I mean, it's not that crazy because like, you know, it could just be a Skype session, but in like the context of art, like how much like we can create like s 
similar experiences in different places simultaneously that interact is it presents a lot of opportunities about like spirituality these days you know like the idea of like god and like religion because it, it's very talked about it's very influential in our society but at the same time like amongst like art circles it's almost a thing that's it's like a thing that's almost accepted to not be a thing we participate in yeah it's kind of weird it's being like a taboo thing now in the art world like i don't know maybe there's just been so much controversial art maybe around the topic or something right now it's like we're able to experience we're able to have experiences that are like very foreign to what we're used to you know like being able to communicate to other people in like great distances that are like far from us but at the same time we're like really bound by like physical things like covid is a very physical thing you know be anywhere digitally like physically we're still like so affected by this thing yeah we're very like stuck yeah like yeah we're in like another lockdown here in ireland and um yeah it's yeah it's, even for um like myself like yeah my even my own air practice and stuff like you yeah it's hard to keep creating when you know you you kind of i think you turn you either like in a pandemic you either like prosper and you do loads of stuff or like you kind of like take a step back and yeah sometimes it's hard to you know keep going and stuff yeah i think going back to religion and stuff it's like a lot of things are overlooked and um, I don't know, for me, I, I think for my practice, I think about how spirituality can like almost be a part of art again. Um, and I think we interact with the world in a lot, in, in very spiritual ways, you know, like people do a lot of yoga or people like say, oh, I'm box. And I think there are very like spiritual experiences in a way, because it's almost like we're literally taking in nature, like we don't want to be inside. But if you really think about it, like other than the exercise, like we don't technically our bodies don't need to be outside. You know what I mean? We don't need to always like, you know, be watching, like be like looking at the sunset or taking walks and stuff, but we crave it like as an essential part for our like mental health or our, our being, you know? For me, I think definitely there's a certain mysticism around art and I don't know what art's purpose in society really is, if I think about it. You know, I mean, I, there is, I think it could be like an affirmation of the human soul, for example, you know, like a reminder that we're still people, et cetera, et cetera. But I could be completely wrong. Yeah, like is art used for like um, entertainment? I do think a lot of art now is more about like the, like, uh, like, yeah, like the public engagement, like for like Instagram or like, it's very like, interactive art and stuff is very popular like joy installation and stuff like things that people can kind of interact with i feel it's quite popular i do think i do feel like vr like it is quite big but i think it's become really big i think if once if once vr kind of cracks the the code and allowing joe like multiple people into like a vr or like mm -hmm. vr headsets or like i think it, art would become very digital but what do you what do you think I think it depends on how closely we can mimic the relationship between like our bodies and like our physical surroundings for art to truly be like digital or not. I think, yeah, because like one thing we can never escape is our bodies. And like, you know, we're, we're like, our perception of the world is ultimately, you know, framed within, you know, our five senses. And art's very visual, but people don't, I think people don't consider how like um like haptic art is you know like how it like people don't necessarily touch art but people feel art with their bodies in relation to how big art is it's kind of like i feel like you know with a public sculpture it's bigger than you you know so like you feel like you know it's almost like greater than you, you can't possess it but with like smaller pieces of like you know work like smaller paintings you feel you, you have a different relationship to it because like of the size yeah no no i totally get you i suppose it's a bit like say like um do you know, like say going to the cinema versus just like watching a movie at home like do you know the actual physical thing of going to the cinema and getting your popcorn and going in and do you know the smell and like the big screen and like that's like such an experience a bit like say going to a gallery and seeing a piece is like yeah totally different like with art i think it has the potential to almost sway away from intellect and move into a place more based on like feeling and more based on like meditation and understanding of the world on more of a visceral level and less of like a logical facts-based level.
Um, which don't get me wrong, like all those things are, I think, very critical to society, but in terms of art and its place within society and like the different places it can go, um, I think that would be a very interesting place for it to go. And I think it's very relevant for like the state of society now, which, you know, slowly is moving towards almost like the authentic, almost nature. You know, it, it comes from like, yeah, what you were talking about with analog photography, for example. Yeah, and I definitely, yeah, I definitely think film. I'm a big advocate for film. Um, yeah, I just love the physical. Like, yeah, going back to like the process based, right? It's kind of more of a process than creating a digital image. Like, you have to go and develop your film, um, and yeah, you have to like scan it in and like do print it out. Then it's very like a, it is kind of time consuming, but it's a very nice like process tactile um, experience as well, which is nice. You know, in evolution, how there's like one animal and then the other animal and in between there's like these in between animals that scientists don't really show it's like yeah. i wonder like where we are in that chain of like artistic evolution what where would you find your source of inspiration what do you i don't know like i think i'm at a point with my work where i understand it as like a thing that comes from nature and i think that like you know i want to like connect people closer with like their understanding of their true self, you know, and understanding that we all sort of share that's based on just being a human being and how we intake the world. Um, yeah, I kind of have the same, like, like I always get inspiration from, I always take photos first of a, like a surrounding place or a space or yeah, of like an object. And then I kind of go from there, but it's always photos. I always start with photos, definitely. I think like broadly, I, like the theme of like meditation you know what I mean? Like the theme of like drawing inspiration from like a, a mental place of stillness. I think whatever your technique, I think that's relevant. And I think that's interesting because that's the thing that hasn't changed with artists. Yeah, it's even like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but even paintings I've done last year, they just don't feel recent anymore. Yeah, it's very fast paced. I know, I totally get that. But yeah, like some of my old work, I feel like it was created ages ago, but it's only been like a year or two. Yeah. No, I definitely think I'd like to slow down maybe in my process a bit as an artist and kind of take more time. Do you think that's a reflection of being an emerging artist or the times that we live in? Actually, yeah, maybe, yeah, because I, I feel like there's a pressure on emerging artists to like, oh, make it and like, you know, become established very quickly but sometimes that just doesn't happen. <laughs> Jack, anyway. Yeah, I feel like there's a pressure on us to like, oh, create loads and loads of work, but maybe like taking your time and like really concentrating on one kind of work or like one idea, do you know? Is better. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. I think so. That could be a thing, but I think artists work differently. Yeah, no, it's every, yeah, definitely every artist works differently. Yeah, for some people, maybe it's like better to do really fast paced, like bursts of, you know, air and stuff. Um, Cause I was talking to my mom about like what I do and like my process of making art. And she's like, this just sounds like playing. I'm like, yeah, kinda. <laughs> yeah. And, I don't know, like. That's so nice. Just Cause like, we're so, like an artist is so impractical as a human being um, that, I think like that's why we want to find such big concepts because it's like we're like oh well crap like we're not make like this doesn't like feed people necessarily but we're like okay well then it becomes like a vehicle for the mind you know yeah no i, I definitely feel i like the way you said your mom it's like playing i i feel like yeah like so much like experimentation is so fun and like but then again there's still some days where you like you don't really feel like it or do you know, like lack of inspiration is such a thing. Do you know, like say, oh yeah, like do you know, like say being in limbo, or, do you know, like when you don't feel like creating or when you have a block, it's so hard sometimes to get past that. There's almost like two schools of thought when it comes to creativity, right? I think one is the idea, and I think this is really prominent, but one is the idea that like you show up no matter what, like, for example, like no matter what, you show up and you work for like say five hours on a project, right? And whether you do some, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't really matter as long as you show up. That's important. And then there's the other school of thought that like you know you wait for inspiration to hit, and when inspiration hits, that's when you like ride the wave. 
Um, so I don't know. I I guess what I'm asking is like, what do you think of those sort of like two opposing sides? Yeah, yeah. I, I would be more of the first, like the first one. I think I like I sometimes like would feel so uninspired, and I'd be like, oh, I don't really want to come in studio today. Don't really know what I'm doing. Like not really liking the way this project's going. Um, but I still try to come in, and I try. I could do nothing. I could just be sitting there reading a book or something, or just talking to my friends or something um in studio and yeah i just yeah i and but like something then at the very end of the day could click and you're like oh and then you can feel come back in and feel way better the next day so no i do think i'd still like to be around my work for a period of time during the day even if i don't feel like it but um yeah well i feel like you know if you're sick or something like if you're not really feeling yourself like yeah maybe not but like i do feel like if you're feeling uninspired yeah, I feel like it's better just to maybe try push on and something will eventually click. But what about you? What do you what do you find? It's almost more important to show up than to do anything like good. Like you'll eventually do something good, but it's like if you show up and do something crappy, it's better than doing nothing at all. Yeah, because that's you, a fact. Yeah, yeah, you'll get like some creative juice flowing. <laughs> some creative juice. I mean, <laughs> even like like even artists like Monet for example I read that towards the end of his life like his life was really routine like down to the fact that he ate the same salad every day you know what I mean yeah yeah but he's like vastly creative and I think there's like a real link between routine and creativity yeah and I think I think repetition's very fruitful you know I think yeah, like we're in really, we're in very interesting places in our career as artists, I find, because I think the behaviors of more established artists are very different from like emerging artists. And like, sort of like our hasteness that we feel to establish ourselves is interesting because yeah. we almost like have this impatience. We almost want to like make something good and something fast. But it's like yeah. it doesn't come fast sometimes. <laughs> I think, okay, so I think the final point I want to make about repetition is like, and what we were talking about, because it's really hard to like think and draw, I think. But uh, I think what we were talking about was, yeah, like, okay, so when you go to school, I think your perspective is almost like you need to get something done in a semester. It's like you mm -hmm. hand your at the end of the semester, which is only three months, and you're like, oh, this is a thing that's like, really great and it's probably like the hardest thing I've been working on today and even like your thesis right it's like a year of work but if you think about you know a lot of like the professional artists like operating now like their projects take like two three years of creation of like planning and it's almost like you know that takes a longer time but within that time you have a lot of time to make more work and it's like in school where in one semester you have to get in the first go it's like often yeah. you know, the best paintings come like you know the third time you screw up or like the fourth time you mess up it's like that's the painting that's like yeah i still, still think i'm maybe in the mindset of of like yeah like college because like um yeah like if you didn't have anything done by christmas they would fail you so you had to you know you had the haste like you're you're like oh crap i have to do something um, yeah, and I maybe still have that haste, but no, I feel like, yeah, I definitely, in my own practice, I want to, like, definitely slow things down a bit and really take my time. But yeah, yeah, I feel like, yeah, you had deadlines, and yeah, no, I don't think I should, well, if you had, like, a show, you'd have a deadline, but yeah, it was weird, yeah, like, to imagine this, you had three months, and if you didn't do anything, you would fail <laughs> as an artist in, in art school. Like, well, I mean, I think that's good, because I think there's something to be said about, like, rapid iterations like micro improvements leading to like big successes mm. but i think it's almost like you have to accept that like you can work three months period on something and just have it completely fail <laughs> you know not that the, i'm like saying it as, as if it happened to me recently like oh my god my like recent project failed but like it's almost like you have to accept the idea 